Greetings, Epic Adventure Seekers. Welcome to your guide to demystifying your world. I'm Allie Bierman, and you're listening to Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. If you've not yet done so, please rate and review our show so other people can find us. And it's really easy to do on our podcast website now. Let's get metaphysicalshow.com. You just scroll down and there's a button that says leave a review. So just leave oh a couple sentences what you like about the show and also what you think other people might like. And please remember to share with your friends. Here is our review of the week. Wise and mystical guide. This comes from the blockbuster. She's, I don't know if it's she or he says, Allie helps us to feel the love that we are and guides us with each guest's wisdom in a practical and mystical way that's fun and impactful. And we are definitely out to bring you everything in a fun and I like that word mystical manner. Today's guest, Domini Celebri, is an advocate for the soul. Before jumping in, I have a quick question. Do you do the same thing day after day after day, expecting different results, only same thing happens day after day? You know, Einstein called that insanity. Well, because of that, I made a gift for you so that you can change the thing you're doing day after day after day and step in a new direction. In fact, that's what it's called. And you'll find the link for downloading it in the show notes. Domini Celebri is known for helping women live life as their most authentic selves. So that way they can thrive to be empowered in their choices so they can live a deeply happy life. Tamini has helped thousands of people worldwide as an author, speaker, a transformational coach, and retreat facilitator. She's been doing this for more than 25 years. Her background is a potent mix of healing arts, acupuncture, energy medicine, shamanism, and the intuitive creative arts. The synthesis of her knowledge came together in her highly acclaimed book, Painting the Landscape of Your Soul, A Journey of Self-Discovery. As an advocate for the soul, Tamini believes deeply that when you get out of your twirly head and back into your body, you're in the flow of your soul's truth, which infuses happiness into all aspects of your life. Welcome to our show. I'm so excited to have you here today. I am super excited, Allie, to be here and really honored to, to be here, to connect with you and your community. So thanks for the invite. Oh, cool. And we are going to have a good time. <laughs> so you want to stay tuned. So first, I don't think I've had anybody speak directly to the soul. So could you tell us for you what does soul mean? Yeah, soul for me is that that imprint, that imprint of who you are at your most truest, authentic self. It's not necessarily destiny or, um, um, you know, whatever that is for some people, but it's that core gift or light that you bring into the world. So That's what I think soul is. When you say that you're an advocate for the soul, what do you mean? Well, I believe that my life's work is to enable people to be their best selves, like to reach in deep and get into the truth of who they are. And that is soul self. And so I'm like 
the soul's greatest cheerleader on the earth. Yes, you could do it. Yes, you could do it. Yes, you could do it. <laughs> Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Own this. Own your light. So. And that's quite, I guess you say it's awakening people to who they are. Yes, that's exactly it. And their In gifts. Words. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's interesting how many people are asleep and i think it's so important yeah. because people enjoy life more when they know who they really are mm -hmm. so you wrote this beautiful beautiful book and i, I was kind of blown away by the artwork because <laughs> i had a picture in my mind that you didn't mean physical art painting when you talked about the title painting the landscape of your soul so i started reading it's like wow and you were doing some stuff i've always wanted to do i always wanted to do a really big canvas and the biggest one i've done is four by four feet but so would you tell us you have a really interesting story about how the book came about? Yeah, I, I love this story because I think it, it talks about when you surrender, when you stop fighting and when you stop fighting um, who you think you should be and allow yourself to start showing up as yourself and things show up, right? So I was uh, sitting in my meditation room, kind of in the middle of a kind of in between a shamanic journey and um, a, a meditation, which on some level they s can be similar at times. And I was really feeling that I just wasn't stepping into the greatest expression of who I am. And I just went into the journey and I was talking to my guides and I said, what is next? What is it that I have to do? What is my, my legacy, I guess, on some level is what I was asking for. And in this journey, I was sitting cross leg on my pillow and in the journey, I saw this big pink book flop onto my lap. And then I was, you know, in the journey, it was flipping through and I saw the channel, I saw the uh, chapters, I saw the colors, I saw the paintings, and I was like, ooh, how cool, maybe it's going to tell me something, right? And then the book flips to the cover, and it literally said, Painting the Landscape of Your Soul by Damini Celebri, and I was like, oh, oh, and the thing that's crazy about it, Allie, is I am not a word person. Like, I really do believe my first language is color, shape, and form. And the expression through words and writing is a real challenge for me. Oh. And the truth is, is I, I really took, I asked, and I received information, and I took that very seriously. And so I was like, every community gathering I went to when we used to do that, I'd be like, oh my God, I had this journey and this is what showed up, but I don't know how to write. I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know how to structure that. And people kept coming forward. Some, somebody was like, I'm an editor. I'll help you edit the book. I, I help publish books. I can help organize your thoughts. And, you know, I was really dedicated, it, as you know, what it's like to write a book, really dedicated for two years, hardcore. And, you know, my friends of mine who were designers offered to design it. I mean, you know, it just like all came together. And um, it, it was a great lesson in being in flow with the universe and what I asked for in my heart. And that's, it's very incredible, but it's also, that's how the universe works. So you had quite a team show up to support you. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it was interesting when the book fell in your lap and the pages were turning that you were looking for the information or, or the, I'm not thinking the word I want, but rather than recognizing until the cover happened, rather than, rec oh, that's your book. Those are your pages that you're going to create. Right. In a way, spirit was like, you have, mm -mm. 
you are enough and you have something really important to share you know and and i'm not that writing the book talking about it now is still a really um big learning lesson in stepping forward and saying yep this is what i can offer the world you know and it wow. really also was a lesson in really trust and allowing and being in the flow of my inner wisdom and the flow of the universe i guess i believe that the universe puts into our world what it wants us to learn Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i i've meditated for many years and i have friends who are shamans but i really don't know anything about it can you explain the difference between a shamanic journey which i've only read about and meditation oh that's a really long discussion <laughs> but i think I think there are similarities, uh, but I believe that when you are, when we are meditating, we are getting um, hollow or hollow, however you like to think about that word. You know, we're emptying out, we're clearing out, we're kind of clearing out the distractions that keep us from looking, you know, at, at our truth. In, the sh in shamanism, it's an incredibly active process. And I'm not saying meditation isn't active, but it's different. Like you use intention, you go to different realms, you consciously step outside of this box of what we call life <laughs> into another realm where we, we are in communication with our guides, whether they are totems or teachers or spirits of the land. It's, it's a it's a very conscious intentional action and generally you know shamanism is used for healing and for divination so um and most importantly it's about creating relationship with life all around us and not just being eye centric <laughs> as well okay that's Oh, thank you for sharing that because I can definitely catch the difference because I've just read about the shamans who like take peyote and become other creatures and it was definitely different from any meditation that I'd ever done. So. Right. I mean, I think on some level, um, we are all trying to break patterns that hold us back. Right. You know, so in meditation, we do that in shamanism. We can do that if that's part of our questioning. You start working with plant medicine. I mean, you're definitely I believe that you are clearing, trying very hard, trying mm. <laughs> very hard to clear out those patterns. You know, we we all want to be our brightest, best selves. I mean, that is our deepest yearning, I believe. And that that brightest, best self is our soul self. So it doesn't matter how we do it, as long as we mm. we do something. I'm trying to take away the words do and have to out of my languaging and I'm laughing because I'm going must do. <laughs> oh, that's interesting because I have a list of this empowering words I want to say instead. I don't have do on there. I really feel like doing is an action of the mind where allowing is an action of the oh, heart. Wow thank you yes and you know and so i'm playing with it like when i find that i'm going i can't or i have to or gotta do or work you know like i'm up here i'm in my head <laughs> and um it's so much easier once we come in back into our heart as well you know so okay I'm gonna have allowing to... wow. flow <laughs> So I've been teaching be, do, have. I'm going to have to think about that. So thank you. Yeah. So That's why we have these conversations. Right? Absolutely. What got you into shamanism? It's something that, frankly, from what I had read, it scared me. So I never thought about doing that. Well, to be honest with you, um, I went to acupuncture school. And I'm a five-element acupuncturist. And at that time, 
way before there were a whole bunch of rules, <laughs> um, the state of Florida required us to have herbal training, like a little bit of herbal training. Mm -hmm. And the man that ran my school, who was J.R. Worsley, he, um, he brought in a man named Elliot Cowan, who wrote the book Plant Spirit Medicine, uh, in to teach us <laughs> about herbs. Because really, you know, it, if you're a Chinese herbalist, that is your path. If you're an acupuncturist, that is your path. Like these are massive types of medicine, right? And so we were just getting this little bit. And so Elliot came in and basically taught us shamanism. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this is amazing. You know, I don't know about you and probably your listeners, you know, a lot of us, when we're quiet, we connect in to other energies. And, you know, the shamanism one made me realize that as a child, you know, that's exactly what I was doing. And the and shamanism, like any good healing modality, gives you a structure. Gives you a structure to do things in a way that's safe, you know, so you don't get scared, et cetera, et cetera. So that was my intro and I went, whoosh right into it from there and i but you know it, I, go ahead sorry yeah i was just gonna say but you know i mean the beauty of where i am now is i'm not compartmentalizing right because i think that's that is how we get to be our authentic selves you you take all of you with you like all of the things you've learned all the you know all the jobs all the experiences you had you bring them all with you. And that's the synthesis of who you are. You know, I do believe that when we tuck little parts of ourselves away, because we don't like who they are or what they are, we're actually putting, tucking some of our energy away. You know, so we're only living with 90%, 50%, 10% of our life force. So to bring all of us back is uh, profoundly healing and empowering. And thank you for saying that, because it's that's something I haven't discussed with other people, but I've been living my life that way for 25 years. And, yeah. and it wasn't in my conscious awareness because I've been doing it for so long. And you're empowering people to take a look at something that may not have occurred to them. Right. I mean, you know, like as women, we look in the mirror and we don't normally, I mean, all of you just think about this for a minute. When you look in the mirror, do, are you like, oh God, you are just so beautiful or whatever that is. <laughs> Mostly it's like, oh, what's that? And what's this? And oh, you know, we, you know, we start pushing away some of our life force, and, you know, and that's just the little things that we do each day. And then there's the deeper things, you know, the patterns or the beliefs we had as kids that we just tuck away because somebody told us they were not okay. You know, the healing journey, as you know, Allie, is bringing us all back in. So I definitely want to pursue this more. I'm just going to take a quick break <laughs> for our sponsor, who today is Audible. Now, I've been a member of Audible for seven years. I love, love, love to learn and I'm very busy doing things all day so I listen to a lot of audiobooks yes I like to read books in my hand but Audible is offering you a free 30-day trial you can download the book of your choice and because you have 30 days you can look around their site is incredible there's so much that they offer mm -hmm. and if for any reason you decide not to continue at the end of the trial you get to keep the book. So it's, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And you can start your free trial over at audibletrial.com forward slash A-L-I-T-L-C. The link is in the show notes. I um, wanted to ask you some more about the, you're just opening up so many windows that none of my guests have gone there yet. <laughs> Talking about the compartmentalizing and all that we do as kids. And you said that you were aware of some shaman-like experiences when you were a kid. Did I hear that right? 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like, and and uh, and I think this is true for most of us, you know, that our invisible friends are really our spirit guides that are just hanging around real close, you know. But you know, at a certain point for me, I I do remember. I do remember sitting against trees and talking to the trees and talking to the water and just feeling like I was having an internal dialogue with life around me a lot. You know, that and I used to do, I used to heal all the little wildlife bits I used to see. And I lived in the city, but you know, like the butterflies oh. and the bugs and I was okay. like hands on trying to, <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, we, we're also raised that we do one thing and we do one thing until we're, you know, until we go on to another thing. And, um, you know, a lot of us have a lot of multiple gifts. And again, that's like bringing all of you to the picture. So those of you who have all these other little things, how do you allow space for them, for all of them in your life, right? And that's yeah. what you do in your talks here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I spent most of my life up in trees. It's one of my favorite places to be. Trees talk to me. Plants talk to me. I've definitely healed. I've lived because I lived near the Appalachian Trail. The birds would get confused and fly and bash into the windows. And I went out one day and I just ran energy on this little thing. And it was so cool because after a while I was able to stand up and then it flew up on my deck and then it flew up in the tree and I just know it was saying thank you and then it flew away and it's like we're connected to everything I don't think it's weird if somebody's communicating with the actually I think that plants are more intelligent than we are a lot of the books I read from Audible or listened to are like the secret life of plants, the secret wisdom of nature. Holy mackerel, yeah. just, yeah. you know, yeah. wake up, observe what's around you because it's mm -hmm. telling you cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I was on an Indian reservation one day, well, it had been like 500 years before, and I walked into an open field and the trees and the plants we're saying something awful happened here and the energy was so strong I had to leave. So to think that it doesn't can plants don't communicate doesn't compute for me at all. No, I think everything is alive and has spirit. Me too. I talked you know, to my then, car. Yeah. It oh, does. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> there Everybody are actually has a in my house. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are studies showing the reaction of metals to when we're talking to them. And these are real scientific studies. So it's just awakening to the whole picture of the world instead of the narrow picture that we were brought up to believe. And today, it's less and less popular to call people who are in tune like us weird. And the ones who do, that's okay. They, it's not their choice to believe it, but mm -hmm. we know it's, it's who we are and it's how we're living. Right, exactly. So you have said that it's very important to go back into your body and that embodiment practices impact the soul's journey. But what do you mean by impact? What do you mean by embodiment practices right so i i have this little lovely belief that you know we're spirits and we get a chance to come into body right and the goody of being in body is to use our senses right and when we come okay so i i also believe that our body holds the roadmap for our transformation holds the blueprint of who we are and spirit <laughs> excuse this is a bit like a border collie kind of guiding us by bumping you know our knees mm -hmm. or kind of touching us with uh, feelings with sensations and, and we all know what this is like when we are in our full body yes there is this wild, open, expansive energy of yes, right? That's 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 an embodied sensation. Like we're 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 connecting into our body sensation as our inner wisdom. 
you know, the other end of that is that full body no, where it's like, no, your stomach hurts. You, or, you know, these, these are even kind of conscious things, but then there's the unconscious feelings. And so I believe that when we are doing this deep soul searching or exp exploration, our, the embodied practices get us completely out of our head and back into our body that guides us. So the embodiment practices in the programs that I teach is movement, free writing, um, uh, process painting or process drawing. You know, it's like all of the singing, moving, breathing, and like all of these things that engage our body because our body holds our patterns and our body also is holding that roadmap of how to go forward. And it's our senses you know, six senses or physical senses that help guide us through the process because we're, you know, we're being guided in the place that doesn't make sense. You know, I always say in my classes, if you have no idea what's going on, you are in the perfect place sure. because the mind wants to have linear structure. You know, it wants to keep you safe, you know, and if not, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, stop. And some of us get stuck in the stop. But the more we come into the body, the more we can navigate the fear of stop, of you've gone too far, or, you know, whatever that thing is. So the embody, coming back to the body, connects you into your heart, your intuition, your inner wisdom. And by using these practices, you kind of start moving out, clearing out, and following that path. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> if I, I have sensitive hands. If I run my hands over somebody and if they're cerebral and they haven't done what you just described, energy stops right at the neck. Right. They're absolutely. not in their bodies at all. Right. I mean, I start um, most everything I talk about with a really simple mantra, which is breath, belly, feet. And because our where our where our breath goes where our intention goes our attention intention and attention goes our breath goes our energy goes right and so if we go breath to belly to feet we're coming out of our head and down into our body you know and just that simple breath belly feet goes poof then we're in our body again so any of you who are like twirly <laughs> i always say we teach what we need to know the most. I'm squirrely, I'm twirly, right? And so I'm always teaching like how to come back down into the body. You know, meditation is a body practice, right? You're breathing. Shamanism is a body practice. We're coming back into our body. Then there's the embodied creative processes, which allow us to come back down and in so we can listen to our inner guidance. That's where the juice is. And the inner guidance is there when we allow ourselves to recognize it instead of being afraid of it. Right, right, right. I mean, I could tell you a gazillion stories that happened when people were doing the embodied creative processes and how they touched things, but I don't know how much time oh. we have to share that with you. If, if, if one comes to mind that you really want to share, please do. I have two, so okay. I'll try to make them as quick as I can. So, you know, when we're doing, um, I always say, you know, pick a color that is just calling you, like it may look brighter, you may just hear it. And this woman was stopped, she was staring at her colors, she was getting pale and sweaty, and you know, this is just wow. paint and paper, right? So what's going on? And she's like, I keep wanting to use black. I'm like, well use black and you know i can't use black you know that she had a really horrific childhood there was a whole mm -hmm. bunch of stories around dark and black mm -hmm. and i said look this is just paint it's kids paint and paper just try it you know and so i gave her the tiniest paintbrush and she made the tiniest bit mark of black and that little bit of permission just gave her that um that next step like it, we you know we all don't know have to know where we're going right 
but all we need is the very next step. And I think that's how our body leads us by these little, little tiny steps. Right. So that one was pretty remarkable in it. You know, of course, by the end of the weekend, she had this four by eight foot piece of paper that was covered in black, but she was delighted, you know, because she was so afraid of it. You know, these embodied practices, they're, you know, you're honoring what's showing up and then you're just making the next step of taking it from the inside out, right? Mm. In that case, it was on the paper. Um, another really short story, and this was uh, me personally, is I was doing a process painting training. And I'm, you know, I'm doing my thing and, and I'm very good at listening to my inner guidance or my spirit. And, and really, it's just a matter of surrendering over and over again. And in this weekend, five days, actually, uh, for four and a half days, I was told to put my paper on the floor and put my feet in paint and walk in circles. Didn't matter what color, didn't matter what direction I went in, but I had to keep walking. And you know, my friends are like, oh, Demini, you're like a performance artist. I'm like, this is what I'm being asked to do. Like I wanted to trust in the process enough, right? Because this is what my body was asking me to do. And I was in a safe, I was inside, you know, I was in a safe place just to explore it. So I can't tell you how many miles I walked, but I really did walk for about, um, five hours a day in these circles, wow. putting my paint on my feet and walking. And in the very last couple hours, maybe last hour, um, I had wrote something I on a piece of paper and it was a heart in a pen, in pen with a heart and it had the word, the letter U, right, U. And in this um, completely impulsive, intuitive moment, I grabbed it off the wall and I threw it in the center and I got filled with rage. Now I am like stamping and then I'm grabbing paintbrushes and I'm stabbing you right now. It was very dramatic and I can't even tell you, you know, I was like, what am I doing? This is like, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I was filled. This is what I had to do. Right. And I suddenly, it dawned on me that what I was walking around, for four and a half days was self-hatred. Oh. And, and, and I could tell you that in my being, nowhere would I have thought that I had self-hatred because it was so buried deep. But in following, you know, my body's yes, my heart's yes, following this process where it was so not in my head, but my body just kept leading me to it that I got to really sit and look at where I have self-hatred. I mean, it was, that was one of the key moments where I was like blown away. I'm like, this is just as healing as any other healing modality I have done or had done with me. And uh, it was, it was, it was amazing. I mean, I was howling and screaming and yelling and frustrated, but you know what? It was just paint on paper. You know, but it was such a physical embodied experience that I, you know, surrendered to it enough to, to get to look at that. You know, it's like, and we all do this, like journal, you know, what do you want to journal about? You journal and you can get to certain levels. And then, you know, sometimes we just need to get to another level and spirit thought it was time. <laughs> That's and, you know, yeah. It was amazing. It still is amazing. Something like 10 years later, it's still amazing. You may or may not know, uh, when I was getting my degree in psychotherapy, one of my courses was art. It was art, the psychology of art, or whatever it was. It was a whole lot like what you're describing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's very powerful. And I never heard of it used quite the way you just um shared and i think for that could be the answer for some people who just don't know how to get at what's bothering them 
Right. I mean, that's, I mean, painting the landscape of your soul is truly a combination of um, intuitive creation, embodiment practices, um, shamanic concepts, and just, and, you know, the acupuncture co concepts, all this whole healing journey. That book, I was just talking about it with somebody yesterday, from beginning to end is a, a healing journey. And it's the foundation of everything that I offer because it teaches you skills around energy management. It teaches you skills in the embodiment practices. It teaches you how to connect to your higher self, you know? And so there's all these beautiful ways to connect through creativity, but it's not therapy. You know, I, I found this quote, and I think it's in the book somewhere, that talks about therapy is about what happened in the past, right? Mm -hmm. And how you deal with it now. This is, I'm really paraphrasing a paraphrased quote, but um, what I offer is not therapy, but it's energy medicine in reaction to movement or writing or drawing. Because, you know, it's like how we move our energy, how we clear out patterns, you know, is, is, a, is, a, it's a healing and it's an energy pattern. Like, you know, you watch people do things and you can see what's happening with their energy. You know, as a therapist, you probably do that in the dialogue. But this is so not dialogue. Like I said, I'm right. not a word person. <laughs> this is not a word thing, period. Uh, I don't believe in talk therapy. I stopped doing that decades ago. Yeah. And it's helpful for some people. And then sometimes you need another way in yes. back into you you know so yeah. how do people get in touch with you well i think in the show notes right i we have my uh website which is dominicelebrity.com and in the show notes there's also some goodies mm -hmm. that i wanted to offer your um your peeps as well and um you know, if this was useful or if this is kind of engaging for you, you know, reach out. Let's have more of a discussion about this. I mean, Allie and I have um, been in discussion with this for a while, and the more we talk about it, the more we discover there's so much we can talk about and share about, you know. But again, it's like you, know, you just go somewhere, and, you know, whatever kind of opens your heart, and you just follow it. So, you know, you can reach me over at my website and um, – you can look at the blogs and stuff like that because there is like energy stuff and meditations and um, ways and practices to kind of touch inside, you know, but my biggest wish for, for the whole world <laughs> is to like, you know, touch in and just own all that you are because that's how we're going to make the world a better place. Right? Absolutely. And I want to put the link to your book because I really recommend getting the Mimi's book because there's probably something in there for you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today and being the first interview on my working internet. <laughs> Be excited about that. So everybody, I want to remind you to join our Facebook group, make a new friend, ask questions, and watch for whatever I'm offering out there to you. Be sure you pick up your gift, step in a new direction if you haven't done so. And there's also a link if you want to work one on one with me to have an initial conversation, see if there's something there for you with me. And I wish you a week filled with blessings and much enjoy. That's I-N capital J-O-Y.